Hiya! I'm Tahana, I'm you my dog and books. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I have some of my TBR hopefuls for June. I say hopefuls because how one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine here, knowing that I'll probably throw in some audiobooks and it allows me to pick up a couple that I haven't thought of. But here's some of the ones that I really do want to get read in June and you can hold me accountable when I come to my June wrap up and you go, you never read any of the ones you said you were going to read. Which is possible. It is possible. So first up are two that I asked you lovely people to pick from posted a video a couple of weeks ago where I randomly selected 10 books from, excuse my attire, right? I'm just out from, I went for a run and then planted a come at us outside and I'm about to go for a bath but I thought I'd record this first. So I'm a bit mucky. <laughs> Clearly I take this YouTube malarkey really seriously when it comes to looks. <laughs> anyway, by the by, I grabbed 10 random books from my shelf, talked you through them and got you to pick in the comments too that I need to read in June. It was a pretty close one I have to say. Um, actually, to say that, I'm going to bring I'm going to give myself 10 books because there was one that was definitely super close that I may as well just add it in as the third one. Oh, and there's another I forgot is my definite one for... <laughs> oh my god, I'm not prepared. Am I ever prepared? I actually don't look at my leggings, they're just covered in muck. Right, so... I would say three books came out in the comments as ones that you definitely wanted to me to read and there was a few others so I'll bring some of those ones back um, to choose from later on in the month but first up and actually this this was the one that was mentioned the most and it's Bunny by Mona Awad everybody just like this sounds weird I want to I want you to read it to find out more um, I think it's deemed yeah it's like Part thriller, part horror, part team drama. It's like Mean Girls with added menace. Also, like, how can you not love the cover? So this is getting, this is getting added in. I've read Mona Awad before, and uh, I didn't know what to make of it. So this will be interesting. The next one that came in close was Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. This is a lovely story, apparently. <laughs> Not read it, so can't confirm. Um, heartbreaking yet magical story, but it is a punch in the gut of a novel full of the crushing cruelty of human nature and the redemptive power of words. And actually, Tiffany McDaniel bases it on her mum. So I'll read the author's note. This novel takes place in the foothills of Ohio, Ohio Appalachians in South Ohio. Ohio, oh, I don't know, Ohio Appalachia is a place where families are raised and individuals step into their own light. Southern Ohio has its own beautiful traditions, culture, history and rich southern drawl and dialect. I have been honoured to call this region my home. I hope after reading this novel that you love this part of Ohio as much as I do. I further hope you enjoy your time with this story which is inspired by generations of my family. In particular it is inspired by the strength of my mother and the women who have come before me. In the face of adversity, they rose to their own power. It has been an honour for me to tell such a story. I've been dying to read this one. This was the book that came out before she wrote On the Savage Side, which I read last year and was my favourite book of 2023. So looking forward to that. And then the one that came a close third that I thought, mm, I'm going to add it in, is Looking Glass Sound by Catriona Ward. Catriona Ward wrote one of my favourite books, which is The Last House in Needless Street. That was the first book of hers I read. Then I read Sundial and then immediately bought this because I'm reading all of her books. Still hadn't read it. So, writers are monsters. We eat everything we see. I'm not sure how I got this. So it looks like I've got it from art. I didn't. I bought it. Um, it's a stunning new thriller from the, la the author of Last House and Needless Street. Um, in a windswept cottage overlooking the sea, 
Wilder Harlow begins the last book he will ever write. It is the story of his childhood companions and the shadowy figure of the dra dagger man who stalked the New England town where he has spent their summers, of a horror that has followed Wilder through the decades and of Sky, Wilder's one-time friend who stole his unfinished memoir and turned it into a lurid best-selling novel, The Sound and the Dagger. This book will be Wilder's revenge on Sky. Ooh. I do like the sound of this one. Um, and I do love Catriona Ward's writing. So that's that one. And then, I started to pick the sticker off this. Um, if you uh, haven't seen him about this before, I read a Stephen King book every month. Um, normally on Instagram, I post which one I'm reading and anyone can join me along in their read along. And uh, June is obviously going to be, I'm trying to pick off the sticker from it and that's really annoying me, I'll need to do it properly. It's this one here. So uh, June's will be his new one, which literally just came out, called You Like It Darker. And it's 12, I think, 12 dazzling stories from the master of the form. And it says, You Like It Darker? Fine, so do I, write Stephen King in the afterword to this magnificent new collection of 12 stories that delve into the darker part of life, both metaphorical and literal. Look at this. Look at this. This is beautiful. So that was a pre-order I got, my, I treated myself to the start of the year. Come on, Waterstones, come on. Seriously. I need to pick that off properly. Any tips for getting the stickies off, let me know. Then, one of my library books I've had out for months is Pet by Catherine Chidgey. Chidgey? Which I think might be Lauren in the book's June pick. I can't remember. Anyway, I need to read it. I need to read it soon. So it says, like every other girl in her class, 12-year-old Justine is drawn to her glamorous, charismatic new teacher and longs to be her pet. However, when a thief begins to target the school, Justin sense, Justine sense, Justine sense that something isn't quite right grows ever stronger. With each twist of the plot, this gripping story of deception and the corrosive power of guilt takes a yet darker turn. Young as she is, Justine must decide where her loyalties lie. Set in New Zealand in 1984 and 2014, a probing themes of racism, misogyny and the oppressive reaches of Catholicism, Pet is a dazzling and chilling psychological thriller by the author of Remote Sympathy. I've not read Remote Sympathy. I've actually not read anything by this author. No, I was just trying to see. She's an Irish author. Answers on a postcard. So, bet. This one, which I've been promising to buddy read with a friend on Instagram for ages, is The Last Housewife. <laughs> the Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, who wrote In My Dreams of Hold a Knife, which I really, really enjoyed. It's a really good dark academia thriller. Uh, a secret cult, an unsolved murder. How far will you go to discover the truth? Sold. That's all I need to know. <laughs> There's a cult. And an unsolved murder. Uh, the next... Oh, well, actually, sh should I tell you more? Right, I'll tell you more. Because <laughs> I kind of want to know myself. While at college in upstate New York, Shay Evans and her friends met a man who seduced them with lies about the world and brought them under his thrall. By senior year, she and her friend Laurel were, at, were the only ones who had managed to escape. Eight years later, she has built a new life, but when she hears the horrifying news of Laurel's death, she realises the past she thought she'd buried is still very much alive. She turns to the place she vowed she'd never revisit. As she follows the threads of Laurel's life, she's pulled once again into a dark, seductive world where wealth and privilege shield brutal philosophies that feel all too familiar. And this time, there may be no turning back. Sounds like a good thriller, actually. Ooh, then this one is one of two that I got in my horror subscription. And me and two of my friends who get the same Abominable Book Club subscription, which is a horror subscription book, always pick one and choose to read it straight away so we just don't end up having a gazillion books that we never read. This one I've seen on either TikTok or Instagram or both, and I've no idea what it is, just... I recognise the colour because cover because it looks bonkers. It's called Myrrh by Polly Hall. 
I have no idea what it's about. Notifications. Mur has a goblin inside her. <coughs> a voice in her head that tells her all things she's she's done wrong, that berates her and drags her down. Desperately searching for her birth parents across the dilapidated seaside town in the northeast coast of England, she finds herself silenced and cut off at every step. KN is trapped is a trapped in a loveless marriage. The distance between her and her husband growing further and further each day, longing for a child. She has visions of pro visions promising her a baby. As Mur's frustrations grow, the goblin in her, her in her grows louder and louder, threatening to tear apart a few relationships she holds dear and destroy everything loud around her. When K K uh, KN finds her husband growing closer to his daughter, KN's stepdaughter, and pushing her further out of his life, she makes a decision that sends her into terrible spiral. The stories of these women will unlock a past filled with dark secrets, strange connections, all leading to an unforgettable, horrific climax. I'm still not sure I really know what that's about. But um, it'll be interesting. I think it's horror. Well, obviously it came in my horror subscription box. Uh, this one is a book that comes out in June that I got an arc of from Verve Books and I'm very excited about it. Sounds pretty dark, but I'm also very excited about it because I want to see the author the day before it's published in Waterstones because she's doing a talk. Um, it is a book that I would say from reading the synopsis previously, if you have any experience of child loss, miscarriage, do not read this and maybe skip forward till I finish this book synopsis. So it starts and I think it's also really dark, kind of horror. I think. At a meatpacking facility in Missouri, Dee Dee and her co-workers kill and butcher 40,000 chickens in a single shift. The work is repetitive and brutal with each stab and cut a punishment to her hands and joints but Dee Dee's more concerned with what's happening inside her body. After a se series of devastating miscarriages, Dee Dee has found herself pregnant and she's determined to carry this child to term. Dee Dee fled the Pentecostal church years ago, but judgment follows her in the form of regular calls from her mother, whose raspy voice urges her to quit living in sin and marry boyfriend Daddy. Daddy? That's her boyfriend's name. Zicky. An unemployed, an, under, an underemployed ex con with an insect fetish. With a child on the way, at long last Dee Dee can bask in her mother and boyfriend's newfound attention. She will matter. She will be loved. She will be complete. When her charismatic friend Sloane reappears after 20 year absence, feeding her insecurities and awaking her suppressed desires, Dee Dee fears she will go back to living in the shadows. Neither another miscarriage nor Sloane's own pregnancy deters her. Deters her. She must prepare for the baby's arrival. An uncompromising masterpiece, deliver, reading Deliver Me, made me feel like I was possessed. Mm. <laughs> Some strange ones in here, isn't there? Then I've got historical, historical fiction, which is my book group read for June by the 5th of June. So I'm going to be reading this. This is a definite June read, so pat myself in the back for this one already. This is The Marriage Act by Maggie O'Farrell. I mean, the cover is stunning, In it? In the winter of 1561, Lucrezia, Duchess of Ferrara, is taken, Ferrara, yeah, is taken on an unexpected visit to a country villa by her husband, Alfonso. As they sit down to dinner, it occurs to her that their journey to the, this lonely place has a sinister purpose. He intends to kill her. God, all these books are pretty dark, aren't they? <laughs> says this and I'll hold up this one look at this cover that reminds me of The Ring the Japanese horror movie The Ring um, I requested this as an advanced review copy uh, when's it come out? please tell me it's out well June so I'll need to read it um, an unnamed narrator comes to start again start again an unnamed narrator comes to in a basement tied to a chair a man looming over her Someone has a knife. She emerges from her captivity into a mysterious and nightmarish city, searching for the meaning of her new reality. As figures emerge from the night, some offering sanctuary and others judgment, she moves through a fevered dream narrative of alienation, fear and the quest for respite. 
Nur Ab Abbey Nakul's powerful debut novel, Supplication, is a hallucinatory, hallucinatory? <laughs> I don't think I said that right, literary horror set deep in the consciousness of a woman exploring a changed and frightened world. That cover looks terrifying. It's also do an ask for it. And then another one is also another advanced reading copy and it comes out in July and it's a floppy one. It is the Dead Friend Project. Um, everybody needs a hobby. And this one was written by the author who wrote... Oh, what was the... Oh, oh it's here. The author who wrote this book, You'd Look Better as a Ghost, which I enjoyed. It's a solid read. Didn't love it, but enjoyed it. So it's by Joanne... Oh, Joanna Wallace? Yes, Joanna Wallace. Turn that frown upside down. So, here's what it's about. Things haven't been going well for Bess since Charlotte died. Her best friend, a favourite at, at the school pickups, and only person to ever run an interesting PTA, Parent Teachers Association, I think that means, meeting. But after being hit by a car on a, while on an ill-timed evening jog, Charlotte is no longer there to help Beth pick up the pieces of her increasingly difficult life. That is until Beth discovers that Charlotte left her toddler alone in the house during that fatal run. The Charlotte she knew would never do something so irresponsible and suddenly Beth is questioning whether Charlotte's death was really an accident. Was Charlotte's death murder and if so, which also oh perfect mum is the school gates is to blame? Enclosed you will find some sticky tabs. I'm sure I've got them somewhere to mark your book and gather evidence. So it sounds like a murder mystery which we'll try and solve. Which I'm, I'm terrible, I'm terrible at trying to solve these things. So I probably won't. Anyway, it looks like a fun one because there's quite a lot of dark. Oh, I'm taking you with me. There's quite a lot of dark, um, heavy dark ones in there. So that is some of my hopefuls for June. Am I going to do it? Can I do it? Let me know how much of this pile will change by the time I get to the end of June. And let me know if you've read any of these, you definitely want to know what I think of some of these and what you're reading in June. Anyway, for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you in another booktube. Bye!